So hello everyone, my name is Samuel da Silva and uh, I am associate professor at São Paulo State University in ASP in Ilha Solteira. And I made this work with the collaboration of my colleague, my master's student, Jesse Paixão from NASP, and Professor David Garcia from University of Edinburgh in Scotland. This talk is organized in the following topics. First of all, our motivation. Next, the proposed algorithm for damage quantification that we are using here uh, via Gaussian process regression model. And I experiment also top uh, involving a wide turbine, turbine blade, uh, some results, and finally the concluding remarks. So nowadays, when the energy is very competitive for use due to the some aspects, first the price per kilowatt hour decrease is motivated by the higher hotter dynamics to be able to extract more energy. Another essential point here is to reduce the cost is the intensive use of complex materials. However, these materials has a complex internal structure with multiple failure modes. Some examples include the lamination, matrix cracking, fiber debonding, and all of these mechanisms can evolve to catastrophic failures. Unfortunately, it's a challenge to detect early with a confidence interval, uh, the existence of the spread of damage. Several examples of accidents, even in Brazil, uh, for example, this example in POE Brazil here, uh, can prove the importance of implementing structural health monitoring for this kind of device. Our motivation here is to quantify the, the bonding size in a wide turbine blade by relating the vibration measurements of a network of sensors. The first, using a prevalent approach in this paper, uh, we can detect the existence of uh, the bonding uh, using this method here. And you can use our method to correlate some information to give diagnosis about the level of severity of this damage. Our proposed algorithm for severity quantification is based on Gaussian process regression. The Gaussian process regression is a kind of stochastic interpolation where we can correlate severity with some feature using a training step. The crucial advantage of using Gaussian process regression is to estimate the incertainty uh, to estimate the uncertain interval to give us information about the efficacy or not of your model estimation to give a, a, a level of the size of the damage associated with this possible severity. Uh, this idea was implemented previously in this paper that we published with some colleagues who use another different structure and you need to adapt this to this kind of approach, to this kind of experimental setup here. A general picture of this algorithm can be seen here. It's organized in two steps. Uh, the first, you have a reference condition where we perform a data acquisition and we can extract some features, some damage index. Assuming that you have access to a progressive damage in a similar blade, by using or a experimental or a numerical setup, we can perform a Gaussian process regressions use a supervised learning. Uh, for testing, we are using a, a no condition and you will need to try to correlate uh, the factors in this state with the learning model to provide us uh, some information about the damage size in this based in, on these two steps here. Uh, the procedure of damage detection is based on a singular spectral analysis where the factors are the reference states that we can extract from the composition of the data collection uh, using this method here. Uh, once a factor extraction is performed, we can implement a decision-making 
Here, we have performed this using a Mahalanad squared distance with a hypothesis test to interrogate about the structural state in a binary classification or an undamaged state or a damaged state. Once this is made, uh, we can uh, implement the quantification. Here, the quantification is a combined the individual local damage index because this index was performed in each path or actuator and sensor. And you can mix in this uh, to compute the, a global damage index. This is a simple mean value of all index where NS is the number of sensors used for monitoring this structure. Uh, a stochastic interpolation is uh, an, an intention to quantify and to correlate the damage index DE with the uh, severity. In your case, the severity of the damage size is associated with the, the bonding size. Uh, the F is a nonlinear function, and we assume that this function has a can be described using a Gaussian process base. Uh, we consider a pure Gaussian multivariate for this. So this is the procedure using a uh, quantification uh, by using a uh, Gaussian process regression. So to illustrate this algorithm, we utilized a large wind turbine blade instrumented with four different actuators. It's important to see that actuator three is inside the blade. Uh, these uh, actuators are used to excite with impact this uh, uh, wind turbine blade. And 20 accelerometers positioned in trailing edge and the leading edge are positioned here to, his, uh, to have this network of sensors. We can see here also the position of the damage, where right? the damage is artificial, artificially induced in this position here, with several uh, signs. The damage was simulated progressively uh, with a series of holes through the uh, adhesive between the blade pressure and suction sides. The, prog the progressive damage condition were reproduced by losing some bolts here. Many tests are running on different days to include some variability and systemic uncertainty. And here we can see the condition studies, the damage size, and the number of signals that we are using to, to do this. For each actuator and sensor path, the spectrum is estimated to reconstruct the health state in reference to compute the factory. Here, an example in a path when you have excitation actuator one and it's really the sensor five. And all the paths are performed this. With this, we extract the factors. And with these factors, we compute a damage index, a local damage index. And with this local damage index, we compute a global damage index that we are using to construct the, uh, the, the interpolation to give us the, uh, the information about the severity. Then the damage index is computed using the Mahalanam squared distance with the training data. Here you can see in the blue the reference state, in the red the testing data that corresponded to several debonding size for the accelerometer training edge position, when the actuator one is using uh, as excitation point. Here we can see 10 sensors in the trialing age. Okay. Uh, a threshold is also computed by setting a risk of probability of false alarm of 1%. And you can see uh, some uh, uh, false positive or false negative here in some uh, paths of the, this actuator. We performed this, it is re repeated for all paths with the other actuators, and we can observe. A fluctuation with some false negatives and of damage in some condition is caused mainly by the spot of the bonding area in the blade. However, it does not affect the result because we perform a fusion of all index 
for each actuator to obtain a global index that easiest that we are using to interpolate with the severity. Using the five conditions severity labeled here in blue uh, for training a Gaussian process regressions, and you apply to do this an exponential kernel function with a quadratic basis uh, function, and you can observe the Gaussian process model means in the black line with a level confidence interval of 95%. We use the other two conditions for testing, representing in red, and you can see that we are able to detect adequately uh, estimation about the severity uh, correlating with the damage index. We apply this with the global index, assuming the four actuators, and we can demonstrate our Gaussian process regressions models ability to estimate in the devolving size. It's really interesting to observe the validation of the estimate of the damage size with our model. To do this, we can compare the actual uh, devolving size, the measure, the real devolving size, with the estimated uh, the devolving size. Uh, here compared, we can see the estimate in gray, in gray for all damage index in the red, the main of estimated damage size. Then we can see that to compare the mean value in red with the black line, we can prove a satisfactory results. Here we display only the data for the two cases we're using for testing that we're not using this to construct to, the, to, to perform the interpolation. Uh, we perform this using different uh, actuators. And it's essential to remark that uh, actuator 3 gave us a better result comparing the mean uh, with uh, uh, the real value. It's interesting to see that these actuators positioned inside the blade. And this is a function of the observability and trend uh, to the nucleation of the initial damage. Finally, some conclusive remarks can be posed. Uh, first of all, the Gaussian process model can learn in certain nonlinear process to quantify the global index, uh, the bonding size using the training data. However, it's required to have localized initial damage to avoid the low resolution of quantification if you are not able uh, to do, have access to this data to perform the training, the, the supervised training. So some next step, uh, this study can follow many open points. Another, for example, another single features uh, and signals with other vibration or wave the data to test another damage index is welcome to do. Uh, we can also improve the regression uh, by combining the Kriging procedure with a polynomial calls expansion. And we can test the other types of failure modes, not only in the blade, but to examine the fiber meters crack, cracks or another kinds of, uh, of uh, uh, damage. It's interesting to, to do something in this direction. In terms of practical application, using hybrid data for training and mixing in, with a uh, laboratory data set and we added some information about fine element model with the gap data for simulate some damage is essential to get to us a population of a similar blades because we can extrapolate this for other wine farms with different operational environmental condition. For example, we can combine the transfer learning to use the same training steps or the Gaussian process that you are uh, training to use to different wine farms, for example, uh, offshore or inshore uh, wind farm like this. These were some more open points that we intended to do in the future. So we are thankful for the financial support provided by the following Brazilian agency, the CNPq, FAPESP, and CAPES. Uh, thank you for your attention and now I'm open for some questions or comments. Uh, 
uh, please feel free to send me an email if you have uh, any question to do. Uh, for more information, also please visit my website or my GitHub of my research group. Thank you very much again.